So far we have seen that any body in general planar motion can be considered to be in pure rotation at a given moment. And the center of that rotation at that moment is called the instantaneous center. Instantaneous because it can change the next moment, it can shift. And as it shifts, if we plot the path, it's called the central. Let us look at one simple case of centrals. Say we have a wheel here and that is rolling without slip on this bumpy road shown in blue and the wheel at any given moment is rotating about a point of contact with the road and therefore that is its instantaneous center and its path is nothing but the road profile itself. So we are looking at the center road here shown in blue. Let us now see the role center roads play in mechanisms. So here we have a four bar mechanism. Link one is fixed and the other three are moving. We already know that the pin here is the instantaneous center I12. Similarly, this is 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 1, etc. And if we connect these centers and extend those lines, those are the loci of I13 that we know from Kennedy's theorem. And therefore, we can locate I13 as a point of intersection over here. But that is true only at one instant. The next moment it will be located in a different location and then again it will shift here and then to here and so on. So if we plot the locus of such positions we are going to get a centroid and because we are observing it by keeping link 1 fixed or placing ourselves on link 1 it is called as the fixed centroid or also called as the space centroid. Let us now repeat the same exercise but this time we are, we are going to place ourselves on link 3 so that will appear fixed and link 1 will appear to be rotating about this instantaneous center I13 and its path this time would be slightly different. So the point of intersection you can see is not following the space centroid but a different path. Let us connect all these positions and we will get what is called as the body centroid or the moving centroid because it is observed from the moving body. Now, we must keep in mind that although we are getting two distinct curves, the so-called space centroid and body centroid, these two are paths of the same point. And therefore, they must always make a contact in that point. But we don't see that happening here. We see them making a contact only here and nowhere else. So that is what we are going to see next that how they retain the contact as the mechanism moves. So let us follow this link here which will allow us to drive these centroids. Here we have filled the inside of the body centroid to create this green shape and then we have added some area around the fixed centroid to get this purple shape. The green shape is then attached to link number 3 so it moves with that link and as you can see it always retains a contact with the purple shape. Let us take a closer look here. So the green uh, shape which is nothing but the body central is actually making a rolling contact with the purple shape, the fixed central. And finally an interesting reversal of cause and effect. See here, we started with the mechanism, the four bar. And that gave link number three a certain motion, which in turn generated these centroids. Now imagine you just have the centroids and you, are, you have done away with the mechanism. And this green centroid starts rolling without slip on this purple one. Even then, link 3 will be getting an identical motion. So, uh, the centroids can actually replace the mechanism. 